Good morning, brothers and sisters. Last week I had the opportunity to record a message, and right after the recording we had our, our prophet, President Nelson, who invited us as a church to fast this past uh, fast Sunday and to pray for the economic, spiritual, and emotional relief of COVID-19. I hope you're able to join in that fast. I also recognize that while in training, depending on where you're at with training, that's not an easy thing to do depending on what you're doing. So I invite you to join in prayer if you haven't already done so before in your own personal prayers to make that a part of your prayer and truly really to unite in faith as we continue to seek for the Lord's relief uh, to our current situations. Uh, as we're preparing for the general conference, you know, the question that I asked us last week was in reference to are we preparing ourselves by President Nelson's invitation for us to personally look into the first vision, to study it, to read about it, to have a greater understanding from it and to learn from it. And so as, as I recommend, as I definitely invite you to do that as well, uh, and as we're preparing, one of the things that I read was a quote from Elder Uchtdorf, a member of the Quorum of the Twelve, who said this, The restoration is an ongoing process. We are living it right now. It includes all that God has revealed, all that he does now revealed, and the many great and important things that he will yet reveal. The exciting developments of today are part of that long foretold period of preparation that will culminate in the glorious sacred coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And that was in the April 2014 conference talk. The talk was entitled, Are You Sleeping Through the Rest? Are You Sleeping Through the Restoration? I think that's a great question. Are we sleeping now? Are we able to hear the messages, to listen to the Spirit and act upon them? Or is this much like molasses that eventually, maybe, at some point, we'll get there? As I have thought about that, uh, I, I think about also the ability of our blessings of the restoration with the temples and eternal families and the gathering of Israel on both sides of the veil, both through temple work and also through living ordinances here on the earth. As I've thought about that, I've uh, definitely thought about how my mother, who did a lot of family history work for my family, uh, she would reach out to us and say, you know, because we were looking at our, our family history work and said, hey, you know, we have all these primary source documents that you've told us about. Can we upload them? And of course, my mom is not a tech savvy person. She's saying, what does that mean? How do I do that? And so we were able to get her to digitally photograph those, those uh, documents and then email them to us. She was able to do that. And then we were able to upload them and attach them to our our account on familysearch.org, which has all of our family history. And it really is able to help further the work. And so I invite you to do that, whether it's making a phone call to family members and writing down that history, writing your own personal history, but getting to know your family. It really is a great opportunity for us to focus on things, blessings of the restoration and something that we can do today. As I think about the question and really the Lord's question of how we study through the first vision, how are we looking at the restoration and the blessings thereof, I'm drawn to Joseph Smith's history, the, the account of his first vision that you can find in the Pearl of Great Price. And verse 13 and 14 I actually read and I thought, oh wow, this really stands out today. So I'll read them to you now. At length, I came to the conclusion that I must either remain in darkness and confusion or else I must do as James directs, that is, ask of God. I at length came to the determination to ask of God, concluding that if he gave wisdom to them that lacked wisdom and would give liberally and not upbraid, I might venture. So in accordance with this, my determination to ask God, I retired to the woods to make the attempt. It was on the morning of a beautiful clear day, early in the spring of 1820, it was the first time in my life that I had made such an attempt for amidst all my anxieties, I had never as yet made the attempt to pray vocally. I can't imagine what that is like for your first time to pray vocally, especially when, as Joseph Smith recorded, he had really been thinking deeply about these experiences. President Eyring, another member of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, he, he shared this with us in regards to that account. He said, the experience of the prophet Joseph Smith offers us a guide. He began and continued his ministry with a 
decision that his own wisdom was not sufficient to know what course he should pursue. He chose to ask God. I think this teaches us a few things. One is don't discount our youth that are probably deep, deeply thinking, but not able to articulate very well, as I know I didn't articulate very well as a youth either. Um, and also, the, the other thought that I had in mind was this recognition of the ability to recognize the importance to act on God's invitations to us. Joseph Smith was determined to do so. At some point or another, we will all be invited to act upon the Lord's invitations. And much like I talked about before, this molasses concept, are we, are we quick to obey or are we in that spectrum of no, we're not as quick? Uh, but I, I'm brought to my mind of President Monson when he was a bishop and serving the, the church in Salt Lake City. And he was prompted in the middle of a meeting to leave and to go see a member of his ward that was in the hospital. And so he justified why he would delay and delay and delay. And so finally he left the meeting. And when he arrived at the hospital, uh, the medical attendant uh, said, are you Bishop Monson, are you Brother Monson? And he said, yes, I am. And he said, well, you know, you're, you're late, you're too late. And this, this brother who was in the hospital had died. But before he had died, he had called out for Brother Monson to come and see him. President Monson was disappointed in himself, his unwillingness to listen to the Spirit of the Lord and to act. And he even mentioned that he never wanted the Lord to ever worry about him not being dependable to do the Lord's errand ever again. There have been occasions where I too have felt experiences of the, the Spirit um, and they have been different moments of where shame has come in to slow me down. And that's been hard to work through that. I remember one time I really stumbled when my mother asked me to give her a blessing. She was, we were driving through a snowstorm and she needed her nerves to be calmed down and uh, she was seeking out heaven's help. I was a newly ordained Melchizedek priesthood holder and I was a little intimidated by this, this really this opportunity to, to give her a blessing. And so I did, I stumbled through and my mom felt that calming peace of the spirit and I felt more of that weight of responsibility of, you know, I need to act and, and do. Another experience that, that comes to my mind is um, really the, the opportunity to assist, uh, assist a brother who's uh, homeless, who came to the San Antonio area and I was uh, called and notified saying, hey, could you please help out this brother? And I said, okay, sure. And the reminder to me was, you need to have a battle buddy. You need to have someone go with you. And initially I thought, no, no, I'm just gonna go quickly take care of this brother and move forward. And it was just a, no, you need to take care of, you need to have someone with you, you need to go take care of him. So I called a member of the ward that wasn't too far from me. And it was late at night, by the way. So I was a little slow to wanna to make this phone call, but I thought, okay, I will. So I did. And we went and we took care of this brother and, and we were able to serve and minister to this brother who needed care at that time and at that time of night. So a while has gone by and the wife of this brother comes to me and she says, um, by the way, thank you so much for calling to ask my husband to go and serve with you and help out this, this brother in need, this homeless brother. Uh, and she said, you know, at the time we were in a disagreement and that was perfect timing for us to really take that pause and also for us to look at really what's important to go and serve. And so, Unbeknownst to me, all of this, Heavenly Father, you know, he lines up, he uses us for his good. And when we're able to listen to the Spirit and act and move forward, it really blesses those around us. And you never know where your impact will go. Um, when I think of the blessings of the restoration of the first vision, I think about the beautiful, just the message that comes through the message of the restored gospel of Jesus Christ and how that really challenges us to think and to ponder upon what is the gospel of Jesus Christ? How does that play a part in our lives? And really my question is, how did that message touch you? When I, um, when I think about this, I think about my family. I think about my father and my grandfather. Both of those gentlemen went to the Vietnam War and 
Uh, when my father was in the Vietnam War, he had a battle buddy, uh, Private Dan McGeorge. And my, my father was there and he apparently smoked a lot. And Private McGeorge, a member of the church and also his battle buddy, <laughs> really struggled with how much smoke was around him. And so I think by way of being survivalistic, but also recognizing he wanted to invite my dad to come to church, he invited him to come. And my dad heard a message of the restored gospel of Jesus Christ. It really touched his heart. And he changed. He was actually baptized in Vietnam. And it changed his whole life. And he decided to really just give up smoking and drinking on the spot. He, he talks about it as giving it up cold turkey, and I think, wow. He learned about the word of wisdom, another blessing, and a message of the restored gospel of Jesus Christ, a health code, and it really was a blessing to our family. I think about those experiences that helped my father and grandfather come closer to Christ in Vietnam, and what a blessing. Of all the terrible things that happened in that moment, I think, wow, those are two really pivotal things that happened to me and my family because of the Vietnam War. And I see the good amidst all the chaos and the craziness of, of the war. And I think that's hard. But I also think it is a great invitation to us. In the midst of the chaos of Joseph Smith's experiences in life, he was invited to pray and ask the Lord for wisdom and guidance. And he did. As I come back to the question of Elder Uchtdorf, are you sleeping through the restoration? And as I think back to Joseph Smith's experience, I think about what we are taught. What have we done to grow in our understanding of the vision, first vision? What have we done to really have a greater appreciation for that event in eternity's time perspective? Because truly, if this is a restored message of the gospel of Jesus Christ, then I think that it is utmost important of, of utmost importance that we know this and we understand it and that we prepare ourselves for general conference as a prophet has invited us to do so. As I think back in my life, I am really am so thankful for the message of the gospel of salvation, for Christ's life, for his sacrifice for me and for all mankind. I pray that you will take this time to really think about what this meant for all of Christianity for all of us here on this earth today and of years gone by until the earth really was started and until it will end because of Jesus Christ, what he has done for us. And because of the first vision, we now have the fullness of the gospel here on the earth again. And we are able to partake in these blessings as we seek to follow Christ. I continue to invite you to study and pray every day to make that time in your lives. And that as you do so, as you study the first vision, you too will have greater insight and knowledge and understanding of our Savior and Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and of your role here on this earth as a beloved son or daughter of a loving Heavenly Father. I know that these things are true. I know that the Book of Mormon is another witness of Jesus Christ, and that the gospel of Jesus Christ is here in its fullness here on the earth once again today. And I share this with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.